It's great to be in the SEC. Thank you for listening to the SEC Recap Podcast. I am your host, Ben Warren. This is our Week 7 Recap. Coming at you a little bit late this week because we put out our special All Vols episode on Tuesday. This is our Week 7 Recap with a twist. Hey, by the way, we've got all our content in one convenient location right now at secrecap.com. You can find everything there. Our podcasts, articles, links to YouTube, even working on a stats page. You can also follow us on Twitter at SEC Recap. Results from the weekend. Vols top the Crimson Tide on Rocky Top. Georgia gives it to Vandy doggy style. Ole Miss handles Auburn, but you got to love the Auburn offense showing just a little bit of life, right? Kentucky got redemption against a good Mississippi State team. Hey, Kentucky fans, about last week, I'm sorry I called you a basketball school. Don't hold it against me. Arkansas also gets redemption on the road. LSU turns it around against Florida in the swamp. Man, let's dive in. Top 25 shakeup in the AP. Georgia stays at number one, Ohio State two. Tennessee moves up to the number three spot ahead of Michigan and Clemson while Bama falls to six. Ole Miss sliding in right behind them at number seven. Kentucky jumping slightly to 19 while Mississippi State falls to number 24. Our standings in the SEC East, we have Georgia, Tennessee, both sitting undefeated on top, followed by Kentucky, South Carolina, Florida, and then Vandy and Missouri rounding out the bottom. Over in the West, Ole Miss, now technically at the number one spot. They're still undefeated in the West. Right behind them, number six, Alabama, followed up by LSU. Remember, they got that win over Mississippi State who's coming in next at number four. Then you have Texas A&M, Arkansas, and Auburn there at the bottom. Auburn now one and three in conference after that loss to Ole Miss. Now, because there's so few games being played on Saturdays with teams having bye weeks or open dates or whatever you want to call them. There's just not a whole lot to dive into for all of the teams. So I thought we'll do something a little bit different for this episode. Instead, I combed through all the schedules and I wanted to go through and pick what, in my opinion, is the most important conference game remaining for each SEC team. Then give a little prediction on final regular season records. So we'll start over in the East This one should be pretty obvious. For Georgia, man, is there a more important game remaining on the Bulldogs' schedule than the matchup with Tennessee? This should be the definitive game to decide the East. And even though the Dogs will probably be favored and get Tennessee and Athens, will they be able to limit the Vols' offense that hung 52 on Alabama? Georgia wins this one. They're the definitive SEC East champs. They likely go 12-0, and but if they fall, we're looking at an 11-1 Georgia team and likely an undefeated Tennessee team who may get a rematch with Bama in the SEC championship. On the flip side of that, for Tennessee, same thing, right? Georgia. Now, the Vols have exceeded expectations in year two of Josh Heupel, beyond what I suspect even the most impassioned Tennessee fan could have imagined. But if they lose on the road to a number one Georgia team, it doesn't really tarnish what this team has achieved this season. However, if they can get a win in Athens, woo, boy, look out. It would be nearly impossible to not have them a one or two seed in the college football playoff, I think even with a loss in the SEC championship. 12 and 0, 11 and 1. Right now, I kind of lean 11-1, and one, but we shall see either way. This season has shaped up to be a dream season for the Tennessee Volunteers in year two of Josh Heupel. For Kentucky, I think it's also going to be Tennessee. You know, last week, if you'd asked me, I probably would have said Mississippi State because a loss would have all but guaranteed a 7-5 and five overall record. But they get the win over the Bulldogs. It keeps their hopes of 8-4 and four in the crosshairs. Unfortunately, 
I'm not seeing much of a chance that they can win against this Tennessee team in Knoxville. Alabama's defense couldn't slow it down, and UK's offensive line has got to be just a mouthwatering feast for a really aggressive Tennessee pass rush. Next up, South Carolina. This weekend, man, it's going to be Texas A&M. The Gamecocks get the Aggies at home, and they're coming off a bye week after a big road win for them against Kentucky. Now, Will Levis wasn't playing at that game. Doesn't matter. All that record's going to show is they got a W in the column for that game. I think A&M's defense is just a little too good for South Carolina's puttering kind of turnover prone offense, but hey, if they can win, then that puts 7 and 5 easily within reach for the Gamecocks. Vanderbilt all right, let's talk about it. Vanderbilt and Missouri, they're bringing up the bottom of the SEC East, not just the SEC East, but the SEC in general. The biggest game for both of these teams is the matchup with one another this weekend. And I'll go ahead and use that to tease out my game of the week, Vanderbilt at Missouri, and what I'm dubbing the battle for the bottom. Look, for Vandy, a win at Missouri is doable. And it would most likely lead to a 4-8 and eight overall season record. That is pretty much a championship compared to where this program was last year. They've already hit the over on their Vegas win total for the season. Honestly, I hope they do it. Go Commodores. Missouri. Missouri is fighting tooth and nail right now to not finish last in the SEC. They need this win. Else they're looking at conceivable three and nine finish. Ugh, gross. Remember last year when Mizzou was a two and a half point favorite at home versus Tennessee? Well, Missouri's kind of looking like 2010 to 2013 Tennessee under the, the inept Dooley years. Dooley and Drinkowitz sounds like a pretty good sitcom, except nobody's laughing. Let's go over to the West now. Alabama. They're coming off that loss versus Tennessee. Look, Alabama still has everything in front of them right now. Their season is not over. They can easily get back to the SEC championship. I think their biggest challenge is going to be the Ole Miss game. That should be the game to decide the West. Presumably, Ole Miss makes it through the rest of their schedule. Alabama is going to be an overwhelming favorite in that game, but Tennessee showed everyone the blueprint to take advantage of a very penalty-prone Alabama team that just doesn't seem to fire on all cylinders. So Alabama is currently at a le- or currently at one loss. I think they can make it through the rest of the season with just that lone loss to Tennessee, rolling into Atlanta for the championship. On the other side of that ball, Ole Miss. Well, that matchup with Alabama. Look, if that's their only loss. It would be simultaneously phenomenal and disappointing. It would keep them out of the SEC championship if Alabama wins out. This is by far the matchup with the most significance, but the Rebels need to be on the lookout this weekend at LSU. And don't forget the Egg Bowl at Mississippi State. I think 10-2 and two is most likely as Ole Miss enters a very, very treacherous stretch of this season. Down in LSU, man, I think they're licking their chops at the matchup with Ole Miss this weekend. Last week, I probably would have said Florida because a loss would have meant 7-5 and season record, in my opinion. But a really good win at Florida leaves the Tigers licking their chops for 8-4 and and I'm going to say potentially 9-3 and with an upset of the Rebels at home this weekend. Tigers have had an up-and-down season, but there is still a lot of upside left to be had the Mississippi State Bulldogs last game of the season for this group it's gonna be Ole Miss the Egg Bowl this game will be the difference between seven and five and eight and four I think for for Mississippi State they got the Egg Bowl on their home turf they have a good shot at the win I think they should match up well with Ole Miss in this very winnable game unfortunately I don't see them getting past Alabama on the road or Georgia at home. Really tough stretch here from Mississippi State. Let's move a little west to College Station, Texas A&M. 
It's got to be the Florida game. And I know Aggies fans probably want me to say it's LSU. And that one is a big game. But here's why I think it's Florida. A&M can split South Carolina and Ole Miss. You can go one and one. All right. A win over a very beatable Florida team at home sets the Aggies up for a 3-0 and stretch into that final game with LSU. That puts them at 7-5 and with the potential to go 8-4 and with an upset of the Tigers. A&M is only 3-3 three and three right now, so they need to be eyeing the most winnable games to get bowl eligible. LSU will come. Get Florida first. Arkansas, man. I know they're looking at the LSU game. Razorbacks have Auburn and Liberty coming up. Auburn is on the road, so they should not be overlooking that, especially the way Auburn looked in the Ole Miss game. But if they do what they're supposed to do, they should win that game. That gets them bowl eligible at 6-3. and three. Arky can win LSU, drop Ole Miss, and still get to 8-4 and four with a road win versus a bad Missouri team. Don't sweat Ole Miss just yet. LSU will be a challenge. Just get to LSU 6-3, and three, and you'll be in decent shape. Lastly for Auburn, look, let me just be honest. The most important game for Auburn is Arkansas, but aside from that, the most winnable game remaining on this schedule is probably Western Kentucky. Look, I'd love to be proven wrong, but I'm really looking at the probability of a 4-8 and eight regular season record with 5-7 and seven being considered upside. Godspeed, Auburn Tigers. That'll do it for that segment. That's the most important conference game remaining for each SEC team. Let's now look at our Week 8 power rankings. Now, these conference power rankings reflect what we saw from each team through Week 7, they're not reflections of how each team stacks up in the AP Top 25 or the coaches poll. And I'm going to break it down a little differently this week. I've Now that we're midway through the season, the tiers in the SEC become a lot more clear. To me, there are four very clear tiers of teams in the SEC. So I'm going to start with the bottom tier and work my way back up. The way I categorize the bottom tier is teams that have no conference wins and or they're below a 500 overall record. One more time, that's no conference wins and or they're below a 500 overall record. At number 14, I have Missouri. They're 0 and 3 in conference, 2 and 4 overall. Right above them at number 13, Vanderbilt. Now, why Vanderbilt? They're also 0-3 in conference, but Vandy has an extra non-conference win to get them to 3-4 and four on their overall record. Finally, in this tier, oh, you're not going to like it, but it's true. Number 12, Auburn. Despite the offense showing some life against Ole Miss, the Tigers still fell and now sit at 1-3 and three in conference and 3-4 and four overall. Now, remember how I categorize this bottom tier. They have a conference win, but they're also below 500 overall record. Now, my third tier is categorized by minimum one conference win and minimum 500 overall record. Minimum one conference win and minimum 500 overall record. At the bottom of this tier is South Carolina. I think South Carolina might be the worst 4-2 and two team in the SEC, maybe even the country. Now, they got blown out on the road by Arkansas, who is not stacked up to be a great SEC team. And they got blown out at home versus Georgia, which has shown some struggles this year on the road at Missouri and a lackluster performance at home versus Kent State. South Carolina's coming off a bye. They've got to get two wins out of AM, Florida, Mizzou, Vandy, Tennessee, and Clemson to get bowl eligible. Outside of Vandy and Mizzou, I'm not sure you could find me another win on that schedule that gets them to seven on the year. I don't think they're going to beat A&M. We'll see how they match up against Florida, but Tennessee, Clemson, no chance in my opinion. At number 10, I have Florida. The home loss to LSU just has the Gators eyeing the 
bottom tier of the SEC for wins to get to bowl eligibility. They're going to be looking for wins over South Carolina, Mizzou, Vandy, just to get to that six and six. They have not played consistently. I think they have a ton of talent, just haven't quite put it all together yet. At number nine, Arkansas. They're coming off a solid non-conference road win at BYU where KJ Jefferson and Rocket Sanders really reinvigorated the Razorbacks offense. But same story as the rest of the teams in this tier. They just haven't been very consistent through the season. They're up, they're down. They've had a lot of injuries on the defensive side of the ball and the offensive side of the ball for that matter. And just playing a really tough schedule through the rest of the season. Finally, at number eight, I have Texas A&M. They were on a bye week. They'll head to Columbia, South Carolina to take on the Gamecocks this weekend. It's a winnable game for A&M, a little cross-divisional mid-tier matchup. I don't really, I can't really say which way this game is going to go. I think it could actually be a close, kind of ugly one. We'll see for the Aggies. Next is my second tier. Uh, my second tier is teams that have a 500 or better conference record. And in my opinion, these are all teams that can play better than what they've shown, but for one reason or another have maybe played down to inferior opponents or, or haven't played their best, lost a game when they should. You might already know who I'm talking about here. At number seven, it's the Mississippi State Bulldogs. After that loss to Kentucky, the Bulldogs are going to round out the bottom of this tier. I still think they're a good team. But man, that was a really disappointing loss in what to me was a very winnable road game uh, for Mike Leach and that squad. At number six, well, you might have guessed it, Kentucky. They're right in the mix for second tier champion. Uh, it's very clear how much Will Levis means to that team. Gosh, if that O-line could just keep him on his feet and keep him healthy, Kentucky might actually be pretty decent. I'm just not sure they're going to be able to do that, especially against Georgia, Tennessee, and we'll see who else. At the top of this tier, the LSU Tigers uh, looking a lot better. You know, they got demolished at home versus Tennessee, but I'm not sure we knew quite how good that Tennessee team was until after that game. They got a win over Mississippi State earlier, and now they get the road win at Florida. That's going to put them up right at the top of that second tier. Uh, kind of in the hunt, but I think 8-4, 9-3 <laughs> is really the upside for the LSU Tigers. Finally, my top tier, four teams. These are undefeated or one conference loss teams. No surprises here. At number four, I'm putting Ole Miss. So Ole Miss is 7-0, and uh, undefeated in conference, undefeated overall, but I have them below Alabama because... Ole Miss has not played a matchup the caliber of an Alabama or Tennessee yet. If they can notch one of those wins, maybe against Alabama or LSU, then we'll see. But they gave up a bit too much to Auburn at home. So for all those reasons, I think Ole Miss belongs at the number four spot. At number three, Alabama, six and one. Look, rough road loss to Tennessee, but I think everybody realizes now just how good Tennessee is. Alabama still has everything in front of them for the SEC West and the SEC title game and the college football playoff. Don't sweat it. Just get through the rest of your schedule. Tide, you'll be back in Atlanta almost guaranteed. At number two, the Georgia Bulldogs. To make the case that Georgia should be number one over Tennessee here, you'd have to say that the Bulldogs win over Oregon, who's currently at number 10, is better than Tennessee's win over Alabama. I'm not buying that. I just don't think anybody else is buying that. When you stack up the resumes side by side, Tennessee just has the better overall resume. Therefore, at the top of the list for the second week in a row, I have at number one, Tennessee. The Vols have by far the best resume in college football through week seven. The win over Alabama cemented that. That's the power rankings. That's going to do it for this show. Thank you so much for tuning in to the SEC Recap Podcast. Remember, follow on Twitter at SEC Recap. Check out all our content over at secrecap.com. Guys, please like, share, subscribe, download, rate, review. It helps us out. Have a great week. Have a great weekend. It's great to be in the SEC right here on the SEC Recap.